we can solve variation. There are four measures of variation. For now, we're going to concentrate only the on the range, the variance, and the standard deviation. They measure how is your data sp spread around your mean, or what is the spread of your data around the mean. Range, the commonly or the simplest measure of variation tells you what is your range by taking the largest value subtracting the smallest value from there let's say for example we have all these circles with starts from 1 up to 13 so it means our largest value here is 13 and our smallest value is 1 to calculate the range of your data we say 13 minus 1, which is equals to 12. That was easy. The other measures of variance and your standard deviation. The variance is your average of square deviation of the values from the mean. We normally do not interpret the variance, but we can calculate it, and we can calculate for the sample variance and the population variance. The sample variance, we always use the simple letters of alphabet. So it's S, S squared, which is the sum of your observation minus the sample mean squared divided by N minus 1. For the population, we use the Greek letter sigma. The sigma squared is equals to the sum of your observation minus the population mean squared divided by n. The only difference between the two, the sample variance and the population variance, is the n. For the sample, we say n minus 1, and for this population, we say n. That is the formula to calculate the variance. But you can do this also on your calculator. At the later stage, I can show you how to use your calculator. For now, let's look at what is the standard deviation? Standard deviation is commonly used and as a measure of variation. And we're going to use this standard deviation. You will notice we use it when we do confidence interval sampling distribution, hypothesis testing, we will constantly be using the standard deviation. And we are able to also interpret the standard deviation because it shows the variation of your data around about the mean. So how far apart are your data from your mean? And the standard deviation is the square root of your variance. So from the variance formula, if we put the square root, you will see that it becomes the standard deviation. And because we put in the square root and we are able to interpret it, it's because it goes back to the same units as your original data. And that is how we are able to interpret the standard deviation. So let's look at the formula. The, for the sample standard deviation, S is equals to the square root of your variance, which is the sum of your observation minus the mean squared divided by N minus 1. You can see that the formula underneath the square root is the same as the variance. So the standard deviation is your square root of your sample variance. For the population, it will be the square root of your population variance. You can see it's also that it's the same. Now, let's look at an example on how to apply this formula. Let's say we have this data set. It starts from 10, 12, and ends at 24. The first step of everything is to count how many there are and also to calculate the mean. So we're going to count how many there are, which is the sample size, one, two, three, four, five. So there are eight. N is equals to eight because our sample size is eight. And we calculate the mean, which is the sum of all the observations divided by how many there are. Which is 10 plus 12 plus 14 up until 24. We add them all up and divide by eight. And we get the sample mean as 60. Now we look at the formula for calculating the sample standard deviation. Remember? It is the square root of the sum of your x observation minus the mean squared 
divide by n minus 1. Remember the summation? All this summation it tells us minus the mean squared. The summation just tells us that it is everything in the bracket squared again and again and again, adding it together eight times. So it's like it's eight minus the mean squared plus x minus x1. Let's say it's x1 because we represent this value as x1 and this value as x2, this value as x3, and so forth until x, x8. So x1, x2 minus the mean squared plus up until we get to x8 minus the mean squared. And that's how we're going to substitute. So it means for every x value, we're going to substitute with all these x values. Let's look at when we have a complete formula, one we have substituted. We calculate in the sample standard deviation, which is s. x1 is 10, x2 is 12, x3 is 14, and x8 is 24. And in the next step, we substitute the value of the mean and we say 10 minus 16 squared plus 12 minus 16 squared plus until we get everything n is 8 minus 1 and once we have solved everything at the top we say it's 130 divided by 7 and we take the square root of it and we get 4,3095 and this only tells us what is the distance around the mean. How far apart are your data around the mean? Now, remember, the standard deviation is the square root of your variance. So everything that is underneath the square root is what we call the variance. And to calculate the variance, we can also stop there by saying 130 divided by 7, which gives us 18.57, which is our sample variance. I've also on the side shown you how to calculate the standard deviation using a calculator, which is simple and easy. To calculate the standard deviation or any of the measures of central location, especially the mean or the standard deviation, you can use a formula by putting your calculator to state mode. You need to know the steps. So these steps are only for a scientific calculator. I used a sharp scientific calculator. If you are using a sharp uh, financial calculator, therefore it means instead of putting the M plus, I think you put data. There is different buttons on different calculators. If you are using a Casio, also you need to just check the steps to put your calculator to a state mode. All calculators work the same, different, but they can all calculate the standard deviation, especially if it's a scientific calculator. And thank you.